Well, I'm excited because they gave me a microphone. Actually, <laughs> I took it for myself. It was sitting up there. I grabbed it. This is my microphone. I don't like this because, like, I get a pain right here from hold. You ever, you ever been on the phone and, like, maybe when you were younger, maybe this doesn't happen when you're younger, I don't know, but, like, you're talking to somebody and it's, like, two hours later and you go to put your arm down you're like, oh! And it's seized up because you held it there for so long. There's a story in the Bible about that, about a guy who, who uh, held the sword and kicked so many people's butts that he, he couldn't take his hand off. We're not talking about that. Um, it's really nice to see you guys today. I'm really excited. Um, I feel like the Lord gave me a message for you. Hopefully it's fun. Hopefully you enjoy it, but hopefully... More than any of that, you get something out of it, and you leave here, like, empowered to do God's will. So, I called it Not Your Way, okay? When it comes to serving the Lord, things don't always go the way that you think that they should, okay? The point is, is that you're serving the Lord. So, which way do you think the things will go? They will go His way, right? not your way. A lot of people think that the Lord is serving them. And that's not true. They live a life of God serving them because they pray and God has to do what they say. And, um, and that's just not the way it really is. We pray to be in agreement with God. We pray to get in tune with Him. We pray to get in touch with Him. We pray so that He will be um, not necessarily on our side, but that we will be on His side. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why we, we get in touch with the Lord. We often have preconceived ideas on the way things should look or happen. That's a big mistake. Do not have preconceived ideas on the way that God is going to do things. You, you kind of know God's character, so you're going to know when God's moving. You're going to see the way that it is. But don't, don't think that you can force God into your way of doing it. Because He doesn't. There was one prophet that he made lay on his side for like forever. And then he told him to cook his food over poo. And that was in the Bible. And I was like, well, that wasn't my way. And it wasn't his way either. <laughs> you know? and, and if you don't believe me, you can look it up. It's in there. You know, so, so, so don't think that you have it all figured out, you know. But know this. God is wanting to work his plan out in you, okay? He has a plan and he wants to work it out. And it may be a little bit different than what you thought. Looking at the way it happened before to determine how it should happen in the future, can, it can be a failure too. The way that God did things in the... In, behold, I do a new thing. You know? Behold, I do a new thing. God's going to do new things in, in the coming move of the Holy Spirit that we are already in. He's given this church a warrior spirit. We are warriors. We are not wimps. We do not shrink back. We are warriors. We stand up to the fight. Don't be a wimp. Don't shrink back, okay? God is in control, not us. Say that with me. God is in control, not us. I'm a control freak. You didn't know that about me. I like to be in control of everything. When we play video games, I hate watching other people play. It's so stupid. It's like, oh, good job. It's harder when you're a dad because you, your kids aren't very good at Mario Kart. And you're, well, Ethan's getting better, but, you know, it's just like, can't you turn the button? Can't you do it? Come on! You're killing me. Toad's last. I'm always first. Okay. Where was I? I'm a control freak. It's so bad, actually... <laughs> That if I ride in the car with other people, I end up getting sick. But if I'm driving, I'm just fine. That's weird. Lord, I do not want that anymore. Brandon's a good driver. I ride with him. He's good. Yeah. We're not in control. There's no reason to make yourself sick over it. You know what I mean? Let's let God do what he does best. He knows everything, and you're worried. You know? He's the best driver. He's the best horse rider. He's the best shooter. He's the best whatever you think that you're the best at. He's better. You know what I mean? Let's let him be in control and not be worried about it. You know what I mean? That's the victory for your mind. 
Um, I didn't plan on that. Okay. I guess I'm not in control. There is a specific story in the Bible that really shows us how God likes to throw some curveballs at the way we think. This is a really great story. If you really think about all the amazing, miraculous things that go on in this story, and you can get past my reading, you're going to really enjoy it. Okay? Acts 10, 1 through 8. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was called the Italian Regiment. And he and all his household were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to the people and prayed to God regularly. regularly. One day, at about the ninth hour, he had a clear vision of an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius, good name. Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? The angel answered, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have ascended as a memorial offering before God. Do you ever think about your prayers being a memorial offering before God? That's kind of miraculous when you think about who we are. Your prayers? I'm looking at you. <laughs> I don't know. I called you out. Your prayers are a memorial offering before God. That's amazing. Now send men to Joppa to call for a man named Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called his two servants and devout soldiers from among the attendants. He explained what had happened and sent them to Joppa. So, here we have a Roman centurion who God wants to save. I don't think Jews really liked Romans. Romans were the occupying force that took away their freedom and made them give all their money to Caesar. Romans were the ones that were crucifying them and killing them when they broke the law. Romans were not the favored people of the Jews. The Jews hated the occupying Romans. That's pretty intense to think about who God was calling to be saved. Now Cornelius was a good man, but still I guarantee you the Jews hated him. Maybe some didn't, but I imagine most of them did. God wanted Cornelius' heart though. He seen beyond the hatreds of man and the things that we hold our preconceived thoughts of who deserves righteousness in Christ Jesus. And he saw the heart of Cornelius and he wanted to save him. God was going ahead of Peter and preparing a path to preach salvation. If you think about this, God is sending angels to the people that we could potentially preach to. That is awesome. Yeah. God is sending angels to speak to the people that we could potentially preach to. So when you don't say something, that stinks. What if God did all this work and you duffed it? What if God sent an angel ahead of you and he's like, Hey, this guy named Jesse, he's, he's kind of short. He's not very tall. He's a little pudgy. Very funny. <laughs> He's coming to speak to you. And I see the guy, and he doesn't know. I mean, you, that's, a, that's pretty broad, you know. There's a lot of short, pudgy, funny people. <laughs> and I never introduced myself. And I never said, hey, the Lord kind of pointed you out to me. Then that trance was nothing more than a hallucination to these people at that point. Because nothing came of it. You understand? So if God is preparing the way for you, well... To, you know, put on your big boy, your big girl pants and walk it out. Say the things that God calls into your heart. Don't be a wuss. God is calling us to a new form of ministry where you talk to people. <laughs> wow. I do a new thing. <laughs> If you're deaf and you do sign language, you know, go to where God sends you. You'll find somebody that's not deaf who knows sign language and you'll tell them about God. I don't know. 
as long as the angel would have went ahead of you and you're you could write it out hey I'm the guy I want you to think about ministry in a different way it's about going out and meeting people and forming relationships and teaching them the gospel. Being sincere. Being someone who likes them. Someone who overlooks a lot of faults and, and walks in the way that God has called you. Acts 10, 9 through 16. The next day, about the sixth hour, as the men were approaching the city on their journey, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry. All amazing things happen right before you're going to eat. Like you get angry, you say mean things because you hang. No, I'm just kidding. He, he, he's hungry and he wanted something to eat. But while the meat was being prepared, notice it was, oh, that was meal, I'm sorry. While the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. So God gives the other guy a vision of an angel and then he starts to speak to, to Peter in a trance, Okay. He saw heaven open and something like a large sheet being let down to the earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals and reptiles on the earth, as well as birds of the air. Then a voice said to him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. No, Lord, Peter answered. I have never eaten anything unpure or unclean. voice spoke to him a second time. Don't call anything impure that God has made clean. Amen. This happened three times and all at once the sheet was taken back up into heaven. You know God's goal here wasn't to make all meat clean. I think I know what he was doing. We can ask him. You can ask him if you want because he likes to talk to you. You just have to talk to him. Um, but what he was doing is he was saying, look, you can go into their houses. You can eat with them. Whatever they serve you, eat it. Because you know what's important to me? Their souls. Amen. No longer are you to be limited on speaking to these Gentiles. No longer are you to, to shy away from them because of the way they eat. You are to go in and you are to preach the gospel to them. Now, with that being said, don't be fooled the getting into sin and you know eating and drinking with people is okay. You can't you can't you can't go into their revelry, you know what I mean? You can't go into their sin. But you can be close to them at a lot of different times. I sometimes will go to my friends' houses and they're my old friends who I still love. But when it gets dark I go home. But before it gets dark I hang out. And the reason is, is because when the sun goes down, they start to do things that I'm not wanting to be privy to. But that doesn't mean that I can't be their friend. I can be there in the times that God sets for me. You know what I mean? And you can be around people in the times that God sets for you. So be willing to speak to people that you wouldn't think he would have any interest in because you're wrong. He has interest in them. Jesus died on the cross for everybody. Everybody. Easy to say. God is in the business of saving all who are willing to call on him. The singer from Corn, or not singer, bass guitarist, lead guitarist, he's weird looking. He is an odd duck. He wouldn't have been my first choice, but he was God's choice. You never know what God's doing when you speak to people. We were talking to John Mark. We said if you spoke to a witch, what would be going through your heart? And he goes, I would be so amazed that God was about to do something amazing in this lady's heart. And how often do we look at them, and myself included, and be like, mm, you don't belong here. It's not your town. But what if God called you to speak to her or to him? If he's a him, it's a warlock, just so you know, I think. I'm not real familiar with all that. But anyway, 
he said, I would be so excited because of what God is going to do in their life. So when you see somebody that's crazy, and the Lord says, go talk to that crazy person, our heart should be, oh goodness, what is he going to do? I was crazy when he found me. I'm still, no, I'm not crazy. I'm very sane. Just add in before. No. I just want you to know that God can take care of crazy. God can, can heal crazy. God can take care of every vice that's on a person's life. If only they have an opportunity and they let him in. You're all crazy. Don't kid yourselves. The thoughts that come out of there, if I posted them on Facebook, you'd be in trouble. I don't think so highly of yourselves. Everybody's nuts. I was thinking about this. So Peter's like, you know, he's there. All right, wait, I'm, t I'm ahead of myself. Let me, let me go a little further. Um, we, need to be, we need to be careful to what ca God calls us to. Don't, don't be a person that, 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 that doesn't listen, okay? There is a movement of the Holy Spirit that has come into the earth, okay? It is already here. It is powerful just like the original Acts movement. But it's, it, it may look different. You know why it's going to look different? Because people are different than at that time. So there's going to be a difference in the way the Holy Spirit moves. There's going to be a difference in, in, the, in, the, in the revival that comes than what was in Brownsville. There's going to be some differences. And we need to embrace what God has, has brought in. And we need to move forward with it. And we need to be not afraid to do it. We need to execute it as warriors that God called us to do it, okay? So Acts 10, 17 through 23, while Peter, Peter was puzzling over the meaning of the vision, the men sent by Cornelius found Simon's house and approached the gate. They called out and to ask, is Simon called Peter here? I, I messed that up. As Peter continued to reflect on the vision, the Spirit said to him, behold, three men are looking for you, so get up. Go downstairs and accompany them without hesitation because I have sent them. So in the old days, when soldiers come to your house, <laughs> that was usually a bad thing. You know what I mean? So, so God was getting Peter ready to do what he had to do. Now if, if you were Peter and soldiers showed up, based on prior events that had happened in your life, <laughs> this may be a problem. But God's like, don't be afraid, Peter. Go with them. There's going to be times in your life when the Lord will clearly speak to you. Sorry. When the Lord will clearly speak to you, don't be afraid. Just do it. And you need to be in tune with him to know when that time is. Don't be afraid. Just do it. This would normally be a time where Peter should be like, well, there's two doors in this house. They're at the front, and I'm going to leave through the back. We'll see ya. <laughs> where is Simon called Peter? Running! He gone. He didn't beat the other disciple to the tomb, so he better get an early start, you know. He's got to get out. He ain't the fastest. Okay, sorry. So Peter went down to the men and he said, Here I am, the one you are looking for. Why have you come? Cornelius the centurion has sent us. They said, He is a righteous and God-fearing man with a good reputation among the whole Jewish nation. A holy angel instructed him to request your presence in his home so he could hear the message from you. So Peter invited them in as guests. That was wrong. He's not supposed to do that. And the next day he got ready and went with them, accompanied by, the, by some of the brothers from Joppa. I want you to know this. Ministry has been kept in the church. Ministry is supposed to be in the church. But it isn't supposed to be kept in the church. Ministry is supposed to happen in the church. And then you're supposed to go out and use what was imparted to you to impart to others. And you have to do that thing that I was talking about early. Er. Early er. You have to talk to people. 
You have to go out and speak to people. You have to be brave. I've been working on it. Like, I'll see people and I'm like, hey, how's it going? You know? It's a good start. You can use that. (laughs) You know what might happen if you say that? They may say this. It's going well. How are you doing? (laughs) And then you could say, you know, I'm doing really good. Having a great day. The Lord has been good to me this day. And they may say, well, I'm a raving atheist. (laughs) And then you could say, oh, well, why? (laughs) And then like a conversation could start. And they'd be like, because I don't believe in God. And you could say, well, I do. And this is why. And then they would say, oh. And then you could say, well, I know you don't believe in God, but do you believe in coffee? <laughs> and they could say, yes, I do. All right. And you could say, okay, I'm done with that. <laughs> oh. You see, if you can have a conversation in your head, you can have one outside of it. You know? I didn't plan that. (laughs) Ministry's not meant to be kept in the church. It's meant to happen in the church, so that goes out from the church. I was called to be a comedian, but I failed. So God made me into an electrician. And I succeeded, and then he called me to be a pastor, and I made it through the school, and now here I am. And he brought me here because he loves me, and he loves you, and he wants me to impart something to you, and he wants you to impart something to me. God wants to grow the church. He wants you to be a warrior who is a warrior through Words of love, not words of condemnation. You could always point out somebody's sin. It will be a waste of time. We are not here to condemn the world. We are here to save the world. Now there will be times where we need to fight for what's right to protect those that are innocent. But there will be times where we don't fight for what's right to protect those who are not innocent. So so what I'm saying is like don't pick a battle with everybody that you run into. Remember, you could say, do you believe in coffee? You you know, maybe sidebar it a little bit from the argument that's about to ensue because you're not going to beat them in their argument because they're irrational and that would be a waste of time. You need to introduce Jesus into their into their heart so that the Holy Spirit can say, well, that's irrational and a waste of time. You know, you're not going to do it. You're not that good. You can barely tell yourself when it's irrational. Okay, you need the Holy Spirit to tell you just like everybody else. Well, that's irrational, Jesse. Yes, it is. I like coffee. Okay. (laughs) We need to go out and work in the communities and we need to hear from and be led by God as we do it. That's what we need to do. That's a good idea. The Holy Spirit is going to do amazing things by the hands of those who operate in the gifts of the Spirit in the marketplaces and in the workplaces. And in whatever places you go. It could be the soccer places. It could be the uh, skateboard places. I'm not going to skateboard, so no... I'm not doing that. That's your job. Somebody else. I am not going to break my ankle to bring people to Jesus. I mean, not unless he forces me to. Okay. And if he does, it's because you didn't do it, Kyle. (laughs) He's like, I plotted all these footsteps out for Kyle and he didn't do it. I'm just kidding, Kyle. I know you would do it. I know you would do it. Peter had to go to Cornelius' house. God didn't send Cornelius to Peter. Okay? The church grew the most in Acts 
when it prayed for boldness and it went out into the streets. It, it, it kicked butt when people went out into the streets. That's a model of what we need to do. And a lot of you are already doing it. And some of us are not. And sometimes it's me that's not doing it. But this is what we need to do if we want to succeed at bringing the kingdom of God to people. This is a great start. But it's only a start. We got that far out of the building. That's good. It's just, that's what it's all about. You don't kid yourself. What God is saying is like, so you got a bunch of walls here, and there's no walls out there. Now we're going to put up some tent walls, because we love walls. But um, maybe we'll leave the walls off. Maybe we won't put the walls on. Or maybe we'll put on two, and not three. <laughs> Don't be confined by walls as a Christian. God tears walls down. He didn't need them to build walls up. He was the wall. Somebody said that to me recently. Okay. I'm going to get done. Acts 10, 24 through 33. The following day he arrived in Caesarea where Cornelius was expecting them and he had called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter was about to enter, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet to worship him. But Peter helped him up. Stand up, he said. I'm only a man myself. I just want you to know the reason that Peter had to go to Cornelius' house is because Cornelius had already f was going to fill it with people to get saved. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's why he had to go there and not him come there because otherwise only Cornelius was going to get saved. And maybe the three centurion dudes or army or whatever, I forgot what they are called. I think they were centurions. Um, but that's why he had to go there. This guy had brought in his entire household. So there's going to be times when a holy angel speaks to somebody and they're like, whoa, I just had a, an event. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get everybody I know involved. Remember when Jesus met the lady at the well? What did she do? But Jesus didn't call her from there to where he was. He went to where she would be. We have to go to where they will be. Unfortunately, we do not have wells that people go and drink out. <laughs> so you'll have to find another place. Okay. That was simple. Okay. As Peter talked with him, he went inside and found many people gathered together. He said to them, You know how unlawful it is for Jew to associate with a foreigner or visit him. But God has shown me that I should not call any man impure or unclean. So I was invited. when I was invited, I came without objection. I asked then, Why have you sent for me? We need to be real careful about our judgments of other people. We need to be real careful because nobody is impure and unclean when they're saved by Jesus Christ. So we need to be careful about that. I'm guilty of that. I, 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 I sometimes notice outward appearances. But outward appearances don't really mean that much. Okay? It's on the, what's on the inside that, that really is important to the Lord. And, and if, if you don't believe me, remember that Eliab, David's brother, was a big dude and a butt kicker. And, and when Samuel came there, he's like, Surely the Lord has picked this one. Because of the way he did it before, when he picked Saul, who was really big and tough. But the Lord said, I have not chosen him. And then the little snot comes in, who's ruddy and handsome. And he goes, Yeah, that's the one, anoint him. And he's like... Okay. And it was the heart of David that was important. He is a man after my own heart. So remember that when you're casting out your judgments about people that is, that is the heart. You know, you could have somebody that is just full of evil. Like the Apostle Paul who was Saul. And God looked into Saul and he said, When I change him, 
Imagine what he's going to do. This guy's a nut. He never quits. He knows everything about my, 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 uh, my first five books of the Bible. He's intense. He never gives up. But he is enslaving Christians and trying to put them to death. But then all of a sudden, he gets knocked off of his donkey and the Lord speaks to him. Why do you kick against the goad, Saul? Who are you, Lord? I'm Jesus, the one you, you are persecuting. You know, when you do what God tells you to and somebody gets saved, the crazy, you know, a lot of times it's however crazy they were the wrong way, it's how crazy they will be the right way. You know what I mean? However nutty and devoted to doing bad things they were this way, it's how, look at Pastor Al, he was a hippie. <laughs> Hippies are ridiculous, you know. I don't shave my anything, and I, uh, what's deodorant? <laughs> I know what patchouli is, but I have no idea about this Old Spice. <laughs> now he smells great. <laughs> Make sure you hug him and you'll know. He's gone the other way. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hippies are amazing people. But they will be just as radically sold out for Christ as they were for the hippie lifestyle. You know what I mean? Okay, I better move forward. Um, God is going to send you to people you would not expect. Would you be receptive? And they will be receptive of the gospel. Will you be uh, receptive to preach the gospel? You cannot be a Jonah. You cannot hate or despise the people that God sends you to. It's not that day anymore, okay? You can't be him. You have to love the people that God sends you to. Okay. When you see the people of God, or when you see the people that God wants to save, they will not necessarily be the ones that you would pick. I've said that. And I want you to know this. The Holy Spirit is conditioning people's hearts ahead of you. Right. He is going before you and conditioning people's hearts. Be in anticipation that that's going to happen. So when, when Peter goes in, he begins to preach to them. And, he, and, he, and I noticed this, that he put all the things out there that are enough for salvation. And as soon as he said just enough, the entire room gets filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. He said just enough. So that tells me that you don't have to say that much. Because Peter probably was a long-winded fella. And he probably had a lot to say. Sorry. And, 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 um, but he just said just enough. He just squeaked out there. He was like, did you know that Jesus can save you from your sins and you can have eternal life? And it was a little different than that. But then all of a sudden, everybody's like speaking in tongues and filled with the Holy Spirit. I just want you to know that you don't have to be the greatest preacher on the face of the earth to walk in the ways of God. You have to be the most devoted to Him. And in prayer. You don't have to be eloquent of words. You don't have to be funny. I don't think Peter was a funny guy. I don't get that from him. I think he was a real serious dude. He probably got funnier as he got older. That's what I would guess. Okay. <laughs> we should expect God to pour out the Spirit in this church. But it takes you. You know what I mean? Okay, listen to this. You can have the greatest musicians, and we do. Ours are pretty good. They're not the greatest, but they're pretty good. I mean, for a church our size, we're doing good. Real good. And some of them could audition at bigger churches, and they would get leading roles. And so that tells you how much God has blessed us. You know, I've been working on Kyle. I, I gave him his first guitar. I, I'm, I'm trying to build him. I, musically, I'm nothing, but... Um, spiritually, I'm building you, brother. You can have the greatest musicians, and if nobody is worshiping, you have nothing. If this, if this area of the church is not used, then you have nothing. 
I sometimes look to my left and my right and I say, somebody should be standing there. Somebody should have been there. It was you. No. <laughs> it was you. No. If you were in heaven and Jesus was at the front, you would be stupid not to be at the front. I believe that worship is a very interactive thing and it is a condition of your heart and you should try to get to the front. Like, it should be like, dude, you're in my way. I'm trying to get to Jesus, okay? Find another place to stand. No, I'm just kidding. Don't let these altars be open. You know, Samuel, he prayed a lot when he was a little boy. He got to know the Lord. And then he became a great prophet who people feared when he came to town because they knew that he carried the Spirit of God in him. Do you come in peace? Yes, in peace. That's, that's what happened to him one time. We need to really get, if you're going to be in this church, come up here and get into the worship. Get into it. Hear from the Holy Spirit. Read your Bibles. Pray. Don't be lazy. Sometimes when my heart's not right, you'll see me at the back. Sometimes I'm back there praying too. And I, I hear the Lord speaking to me. Come to the right, or the, to the front, Jesse, because I'll fix you. I'll take care of your issues. I'll clean you up. I'll get you ready for another week. And you'll be back out there being the cocky little snot that you are. And I'll pour out the Spirit when you speak to people. And I'll do amazing things. Come on up to the front. Let me fill you up. Your Tesla's low. You need some juice. Your gasoline car is low. You need some fuel for your mule. Come on up to the front and get filled with the Holy Spirit and fire. Okay. You should be expecting God to do amazing things when you speak to people. Faith without works is dead. Faith with works is not dead. When you are sent by God as a messenger, you carry the full power of the Spirit. So like you had all these uh, prophets from long ago, they carried the full power of God. They had authority. When you are sent out as a messenger of God, you carry the full authority in the Spirit of God to speak to people because He's given it to you. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. He gave you permission. You are now an, an ambassador of Christ to everyone that you come in contact with. Do not be ashamed. Do not shrink back. Jesus came into the world to save all people. We all needed His sacrifice since the day we were born. Is there anyone here today that doesn't know Jesus and they want to receive the gift of life for all eternity? Why don't you guys close your eyes for me? Is there anyone here that wants to receive Jesus Christ? I believe there's going to be people online that are, that are going to give their hearts to the Lord today. I didn't really feel like I was going to get anyone in this room because I feel like you all pretty much know Jesus or you've made a decision. Lord, I pray right now for that person or those persons that are online, Lord, that you would just bless them this day. If you would, say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you came and died on the cross. You did it for my sin. I accept your sacrifice. Please forgive me of my sins. I give you permission this day to change my heart and change my belief systems. Take control, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So, the last thing I want to do is I want to commission you to preach the gospel. So I'm going to pray, and if you want to be commissioned to preach the gospel, you already are, but I'm just going to like give you a little more. 
I want you to raise your hand. In fact, I want you to stand up. Lord Jesus, this day, in this church, I proclaim that all the people that are here are anointed with the Holy Spirit and fire. And they have a boldness and there is a spring welling up in their bellies even right now, Lord God, to speak to those gas attendants, Lord God, to speak to those people in the stores, Lord Jesus, to speak to the people that need you, Lord God. I pray that you would give them divine understanding of people. I pray that you would heal sicknesses and diseases and broken bones and and legs that are too short and fingers that are gone and things that are just crazy, Lord God. I pray right now in Jesus' name, we ask, Lord, in your name that you would give that to us. Lord God, to proclaim the gospel to people. I pray, Lord God, that they would be eloquent of the words that it takes to get somebody to you, Lord God. I pray that these four walls will no longer restrain us from preaching the gospel to this entire town, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you are building up young people who are our witnesses and evangelists for you, Lord God. I pray, Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, that you are moving in and amongst our hearts and our lives and pointing us to people who need you in Jesus' name. Lord, we are seeking after the fertile ground of the souls that are made to come into your kingdom, Lord God. Send us to that ground, Lord God. Help us to be planters, waterers, and even the plow, Lord. And Lord, just begin to harvest all around us, Lord God. We pray that every activity that you orchestrate at this church, Lord, that it would get outside of these four walls, Lord God, and it would get into the community, Lord. I pray, Lord, over our politicians and over the people, Lord, that we would be so bold as to speak to them, over our bosses, over those who are above us, and also, Lord, those that are well below, Lord. I pray that our hearts would be right when we come into contact with anyone who needs you, Lord. That we would see that the two pennies that were thrown into the offering were a greater sacrifice than all those who threw in much, Lord God. That we would recognize that one soul is of such great value that we would never shrink back, Lord. That you would send angels ahead of us to to get people ready to hear the gospel, Lord God. That you would do amazing things, Lord. And right now I can... In the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, come into us and anoint us with power to proclaim the gospel to Hastings, Michigan, Lord Jesus, and to the rest of the world, Lord. Lord, I pray that anyone whose heart is open will receive a full blessing of the Holy Spirit to proclaim the gospel right now in Jesus' name. Lord, come into these young people and make them tough. Make them strong, Lord God. Help them to be truth tellers that tell the truth in love, Lord God. Help us to see that you can change any soul and that we don't have the right to judge anyone, Lord. And that we can break down any stronghold in any person's life, Lord God. We have that authority through you, Jesus. And help us to move and to act that out. 